Well, I'm a law professor in real life, and I'm a former uh, assistant district attorney, a former assistant state's attorney from Cook County, Illinois, which is Chicago, where I tried murder trials. And uh, become an academic. I'm now a law professor at Georgetown Law School. I'm the Carmack Waterhouse professor of legal theory there. And uh, wrote a book called The Structure of Liberty. And the producer of this film read it years ago. And it sort of changed his way to look at things. And it's about rights. And it's about inalienable rights. So he mm. thought I had something to say with respect to the script years ago. When he came at me with the script years ago, I didn't really have time because of everything I was doing to really look at it. But this time around, when he did come back with the script, I was able to take a look at it and sort of help out. And in the meantime, there was this part in there for an assistant to the district attorney that he had in mind for me. And I was just like so thrilled that he thought that I could do it. And also that it, it sort of fit my schedule. Since mm. school had just let out, I just finished grading my exams and I sent a book manuscript off to the publisher and I'm, I was free to do it. I have a case book in contracts, a case book in constitutional law I just finished, but the two books of mine that are the books people would read are The Structure of Liberty, Justice and the Rule of Law, and the other one is Restoring the Lost Constitution, the Presumption of Liberty. So the first is about what rights we have as individuals, and the second is about how the Constitution should better protect those rights. Well, this is just a thrill. I mean, I, I've watched Star Trek since the first run of the original Star Trek. I mean, when I was 14 years old, Star Trek came on, and I watched every episode as a kid, and I watched every Star Trek. I didn't watch as much other sci-fi. Star Trek was somehow the gold standard, and everything else seemed fake to me. Only Star Trek seemed real, and I bought it all the way through. So I watched every episode of Next Generation. The idea that I would be sitting next to Marina Sirtis in a situation like this for four solid days when we have nothing really else to do but to talk to each other is just like a kind of a dream come true. It's like, I still can't believe it's true. Well, Walter, I watched him as Chekhov as a kid. You know, he doesn't, for me, doesn't have quite the sex appeal that Marina has, but he came up and chatted me up and we started talking about things. I mean, you know, that was just amazing. And I happen to be in a movie that has a character named after me, Randall Barnett, expert witness in constitutional law. It just so happens by coincidence, he's the Carmack Waterhouse Professor of Constitutional Law at Georgetown Law School. I don't know how that happened. It just is an amazing coincidence. You don't need to do this. The case is won. I was instructed to win this case at any cost, and that's exactly what I intend to do. There's an undercurrent theme here that isn't expressed. It's actually so subtle that the name of the movie inalienable is a reflection of this undercurrent and that is the notion of inalienable rights and the idea that even aliens have inalienable rights and it also is the notion of whether the constitution protects persons or human beings and in this case we have someone who's not a human being uh, but the argument is that the constitution protects even persons who are not human beings and this really only happens in sci-fi because in the world we normally inhabit the only persons we know are human beings but in the world of sci-fi we also know there's lots and lots of persons who are not human beings and it's funny that the constitution doesn't mention human beings it only mentions citizens and persons so there's no reason why the Constitution, the way it's written, should be limited to human beings. It challenges you to think about what a person is because it's a person who deserves the protection of the Constitution. And it challenges you to realize that human beings are not the only possible persons. And, and you have to ask yourself, well, what makes a person a person? Why is this alien a person and not just octopi, as Prosecutor Barry suggests? It forces the audience to answer that question. Why is this creature not a creature? but a person, and if he is a person, then the Constitution applies to him as well.